Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the topic of DNA repair. Now, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. And if you can, please turn off your ad block because these dumb ads you're seeing on our videos allow us to keep these videos completely free so that we don't have to charge you a single dime and so that you don't have to go deeper into debt. We really appreciate your support. And with that being said, let's dive right in by talking first about DNA replication. Before we talk about repairing, we need to talk about how DNA replication occurs. We have a whole video on this, so if you want to see the detailed aspect of detailed uh, content you need to know, I highly recommend you check it out on our YouTube channel or on our website, www.madmedicine.org. So, what happens during replication? Replication, DNA replication occurs during the interface of the cell cycle, and it involves many many proteins and enzymes. In fact, it is a very complex procedure. It is a very complex process that goes down and even as we are describing it to you for your testing purposes, we are simplifying it because it gets very nitty gritty, it gets very complicated. It's not as simple as we are often taught in the school setting. We're basically taught the most basic bare bone concepts of replication, but the actual process very, very, very complicated. And DNA replication is semi-conservative. It involves the, both the continuous and discontinuous or non-continuous strands called the Okazaki fragments. You can see them right here and right here. They're not continuous, there's a break right here. So these are the Okazaki fragments and then you have a continuous fragment right there. And the DNA replication will always occur in the five prime to the three prime direction. So how do I remember that? Five to three, is the way to be. Okay, this is a dumb mnemonic. Thought I'd share it. Enjoy or don't. I don't know. Anyways, there are three main stages to DNA replication. You have in the initiation, elongation, and termination phases. And at each stage, there are specific enzymes that are functioning and there are specific uh, actions that they are doing to replicate the DNA. If at any of these stages there is an error that occurs, we will lead to a DNA mutation. Now, majority of the time, mutations are bad. Sometimes mutations can be good and they can give us unexpected benefits. For example, in the case of sickle cell anemia, sickle cell anemia or sickle cell are, uh, trait is very common in the African region of the world. Turns out sickle cells are actually a protective trait against malaria. So a mutation in the hemoglobin, even though it can be very detrimental and kill you, can actually protect you from an infection, which is also very deadly and can kill you. So it's not always a win-win situation with mutations. But for the most part, as far as we're concerned, mutations are going to be bad, with the exception of the few things we're going to talk about in subsequent lectures, but not in this lecture. Anyways, I digress. If at any point you have errors during these stages of replication, you will have an error. So DNA mutations occur at uh, errors of replication, okay? But they can also happen naturally when the DNA is not replicating. For example, UV light will break the DNA, will cause strand breaks at any stage because it doesn't mean that the cell has to be replicating. That's how important you need to understand this. That's how important it is to understand that DNA replications usually happen, as DNA mutations, excuse me, usually happen during replication, but they can also happen elsewise. Okay, so there are five main, excuse me, there are five main classifications of mutations that you need to know. And these are point mutations, uh, and then you have frame shift mutations, large segment deletions, triplet repeat expansion mutations, and splice site mutations. We've discussed all of these in a previous se uh, lecture series where we have uh, discussed them both in detail. I highly recommend you check those out, the DNA mutation series. Now, specific mutations can lead to specific types of diseases. So a certain mutation, like a point mutation, will have a certain disease associated with it. A frame shift mutation will have a, a certain disease uh, uh, associated with it. But but it doesn't mean that that type of mutation will always lead to the disease. Different types of mutations can also lead to one disease, so keep that in mind. But mutations will lead to diseases. So now let's talk about DNA repair. If our body was not able to repair those mutations during replication or otherwise, we would all be dead. So our body has developed a mechanism of repairing any damage or mismatched DNA. And this is a essentially, uh, for a, it essentially this is a method that we've developed in order to prevent further damage in subsequent progenies. Think about it from a uh, evolutionary standpoint. Our bodies want to pass off our DNA to our progeny and then our progeny's DNA is gonna go to the next 
set up, you know, uh, next generation. We don't want errors happening because if it is, we'd all die off. Okay, so we have developed a way to fix errors that can happen in the DNA. And DNA can either be repaired by a single strand fix, meaning you have two strands, right? In terms of your DNA, it's a double helix structure like this, right? So you have one strand right here. We're gonna call this strand A and this is strand B. This is strand B and this is strand A. So you can fix DNA by either a single strand or just one strand, meaning you take strand A and you use strand A, or you can fix it by a double strand uh, uh, structure at the same time. So in one way, you'd be just fixing this region only. You would be using this region to fix it. Okay, so this would be the single strand method. I'm drawing this so you guys can visualize. Oh, strand, not strand. Okay, and then you can also do the double strand method. So you could take this portion and this portion, the corresponding one, and this would be the double strand. That's what we're talking about when we talk about single stranded or double stranded repair. All right, so with that being said, we're gonna be discussing different types of repairs for each, each type of mechanism. So single strand repairs and double strand repairs. So let's start off with the single ones because these have the most uh, things that you need to know. There are three main mechanisms of a repair you have to have a good understanding of. The first is the nucleotide excision repair, then you have base excision repair, and then you have mismatch repair. So the nucleotide excision repair is a very important Important type of repair process that we have to fix DNA mutations. Essentially, when you have a nucleotide mutation, you're going to have a bulky helix distorting appearance of the DNA. This is, as you may have guessed it, not normal at all. So, what do we do? Essentially, we're going to have these proteins called endonucleases. These endonucleases will go in, they'll remove the damaged nucleotides, okay? They'll remove the actual nucleotides, meaning the, and what is a nucleotide? We're just going to review this really quickly. You have the sugar backbone plus the nitrogenous base plus the phosphate. So it will remove this entire structure completely. And then DNA polymerase can come in and it can correct for the missing nucleotide, the one that should go there. Then DNA ligase will come in, fix the gap, and we will go back to normal, problem solved. It will be back to work, okay? We'll go back to work, business as usual. Or business as usual, cool. Okay, that's what that's what happens. This is going to occur in the G1 phase of the cell cycle. Remember that. This is going to yield. This whole process is pretty straightforward. Uh, it gets it, it can be more complicated, but we want to simplify it for your understanding. So that's what's going on. Okay, it's occurring in the G1 phase. So that is the nucleotide excision repair process. The next one is a little bit more complicated. It's called the base excision repair. The base excision repair process essentially is a base, uh, you're repairing the base, the nitrogenous base. A base specific glycosylase enzyme will remove the altered base only. So you will retain the ribose sugar backbone, okay, plus the phosphate group in the nucleotide, all right? This will create something called an AP site. What is the AP site? It is essentially a apurinic or apyrimidinic site. Remember, your bases, the nitrogenous bases can either be purines or pyrimidines. Okay, so purines are AG and then CT. These are your py uh, pyrimidines. If you remove the base, it's just telling you you have an AP site, which just means that this site doesn't have a base associated with it, okay? AP-specific endonucleases now. AP-specific, meaning these are going to be endonucleases that only can recognize the AP site. They will come, they'll cleave the 5' prime end of the DNA. And then they will ligate, and then they will essentially uh, cleave the 3' prime end of the DNA with a enzyme called ligase, and then DNA polymerase beta, which is a very specific type of DNA polymerase that comes in essentially in uh, uh, eukaryotic cells, it's gonna fill in the gaps with the correct DNA nucleotides and bases. And then ligase, remember, lyase 
and ligase. Very easy to confuse them, but ligase. Ligase is going to come, steal the strand, and this is going to create the correct version, and we will go back to business as usual. A little bit more complicated. It's not as easy as just removing the entire you know, uh, nucleotide. You're removing just the base. So you have different processes. Essentially, the way I like to think about it, you gotta go into a very small structure, a very tight area. So it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. You're gonna have to you know, take your time, figure out what you're doing, kind of like surgery. If you guys haven't ever had a chance to be in a surgery or participate in a surgery, when you are doing very complicated nitty gritty surgeries or very high, um, high chance of damage occurring in a certain area, like for example, heart surgery or neurosurgery, you gotta take your time because a little mistake can cost, can be very costly. So similar to this, right? You have a very small space where something has to be fixed. We're gonna take our time. It's gonna be a little bit more complicated. All right, now basic excision repair can occur throughout the cycle. And this is a very important mechanism of preventing damage that occurs throughout the cell cycle, okay? The other one only occurs, the nucleotide excision only occurs at G1. So the rest of the, the you know, uh, phases of the cell cycle, G2, et cetera, et cetera, you cannot fix the DNA. That means you might have cell damage occurring and your cells might be like damaging other cells. But because of basic excision repair, we can fix our DNA throughout the cell cycle and be able to manage any problems we're dealing with. And then finally, we have the mismatch repair mechanism, okay? This is pretty high yield because there are certain diseases associated with this uh, that you should know, but this is a very, very important topic, so make sure you understand this. The mismatch repair mechanism occurs when uh, you're dealing with bases that are, or where you're dealing with nucleotides that are not matched to the correct uh, corresponding uh, nucleotide. So newly synthesized DNA strands are actually proofread for accuracy. That's very important. And when we have a mismatch in the nucleotides, for example, normal nucleotides, A matches with T, G matches with C, okay? One purine matches with a pyrimidine. Now, if you have a mismatch occurring, okay, like this right here, all of these are mismatched, you are going to notice, or your body is going to notice that mismatch and it's gonna remove it and correct it. This happens uh, the, pretty much the same way, and at the end of it, you're going to have ligase that's going to come and seal the corrected nucleotide DNA strand, okay? And this is mainly going to happen in the S phase of the cell cycle. So, mismatch repair is not happening at all times, it's only happening at the L phase, S phase. But this is very important because there are a set of diseases, or a syndrome essentially, that you need to know, that is very high yield, that you will be tested on, and that's something that you should understand that has to deal with errors in DNA replication, specifically an error in mismatch repair. That syndrome is called Lynch syndrome. Okay, Lynch syndrome occurs when you have a defect in mismatch repair. This is also known as hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer or HNPCC. This is a familial cancer syndrome caused by an autosomal dominant mutation in the mismatch repair genes. Essentially, you are not able to repair mismatched uh, DNA strands or uh, mismatched nucleotides, okay? An affected number or affected individuals actually develop a small number, oh, small number of adenomas that rapidly will progress into colorectal cancer. However, there will not be polyps. Normal colorectal cancer usually progresses after uh, you know a polyp will be formed and then it will develop into cancer. This is non-polyposis. The name gives it away. There are no polyps. There's a small number of adenomas that will go directly to cancer, okay, colorectal cancer. Often they'll have an early disease presentation. So if you see an early adult, with colorectal carcinoma, you need to think of a few things, one of which is Lynch syndrome, okay, classic presentation. And they essentially have another interesting finding that they're gonna develop other types of cancers. So if you have an early adult, plus they have either GI, endometrial, or ovarian carcinomas, your initial, your gut reaction, HNPCC, Lynch syndrome. Gut reaction. And what do you need to remember with Lynch syndrome? Mismatch, 
repair mutation. These three things, very freaking high yield. So high yield, you will 100% get an exam question on this on multiple exams. Okay, so now that we've gone through uh, single strand DNA repairs, let's move on. Let's talk about double stranded repairs. Double strand repairs are pretty straightforward. There are two types that you need to know. You have non homologous jo end joining and you have homologous recombination. In non homologous end joining, you're going to use, uh, uh, re you're going to repair double stranded DNA breaks by taking two ends of DNA fragments, okay? And uh, you are going to bring two ends of DNA fragments together and you will correct it that way. However, However, you will lose some DNA, okay? So what's going on? Essentially, you have this right here, you have this right here, okay? You have an error in this sequence. So let's say this sequence is uh, essentially what's damaged. You will remove this sequence and you will essentially have a smaller version of DNA. You will lose while you are repairing. You will most likely loss of DNA material. Very common to lose actual material in non-homologous end joining. Now this is defective in Fanconi anemia and ataxia telangiectasia. One of the main uh, causes that lead uh, to these uh, conditions is errors or essentially non-homologous end joining mutation when you're repairing those DNAs. Uh, oftentimes that DNA is already very damaged to begin with. So when you go through this mechanism, it's not really going to be the best option for our body to go through. And then finally, we have homologous recombination. This is pretty interesting and this is very important. So pay attention. Okay. I want to write high yield already. So you guys, uh, those of you who are falling asleep in this lecture, wake up. This is high yield AF, just like Lynch syndrome, high yield AF. So in homologous uh, recombination, you're going to need two strands of homologous DNA, double stranded DNA. Okay. So what happens is that you are going to take the strand from damaged DNA to repair it using the complementary strand from the intact or homologous DNA as a template. Okay. You are going to take the strand from the other one as a template to be able to create the perfect uh, uh, the, the the perfect copy so you can repair the DNA. And once you do that, that portion of the DNA is then placed in the, the correct location. And the process of, you know, removing and then lig uh, adding it and then ligating it is pretty much the same. All right. Now, why is this important? Because this functions to restore duplexes accurately without loss of nucleotides. It's one of the best ways we can repair DNA mutations without loss. Very, very important, okay? Now, there are certain set of uh, uh, cancers that can actually be developed if it, this process is defective. For example, breast and ovarian cancers. We know that the B BRCA1 gene is involved in repairing damaged DNA. And mutations in the BRCA1 uh, gene, or the BRCA1 gene, will lead to defective double-strand repairs because it is essentially uh, this process, the homologous recombination process that is defective. So the BRCA1 gene is responsible for the homologous recombination, especially in the breast and ovarian tissues. Issues with the BRCA1 protein means we have issues with this whole process, and that's how we can develop, or that's how people develop breast and ovarian cancers, especially those that have BRCA1 mutations. So with that being said, we've pretty much covered everything you need to know for DNA repair. If you thought this was helpful or found this helpful, please subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. It allows to us to keep this content completely free so that we don't have to charge you so you don't have to go deeper into debt. And if you want to see more content like this, go to our website, www.madmedicine.org, where you can find a bunch more free content. So yeah, enjoy.